thank you for inviting me to present today. Um, and I'm sorry that I'm not there with you in person. Digital transformation uh, is an enabler. Um, it's not an end in itself. So I'm actually going to start by talking very briefly about what it is that we're trying to enable. Um, and then I'm going to talk about the initiatives and the key stakeholders in the UK who are creating new industry processes, including Project 13. And then I'm going to explain what Project 13 is and how it helps to overcome the barriers to unlock the potential of digital transformation. So in 2020, the UK government published the National Infrastructure Strategy and soon afterwards the Construction Playbook. And it, they contain steps to help achieve the strategy. And for the purposes of this presentation, the two key things from these documents that I want to pick out are the focus on outcomes and the need to establish long term sustainable relationships. So what do I mean by focusing on outcomes? And uh, as I said earlier, that digital transformation is only an enabler. So what is it that we're actually trying to enable? Um, so last April, the built environment in the UK got together um, and answered those questions and came up with our vision for the built environment. Um, and I'm going to read it out because it's so crucial to how we rethink our industry processes and for achieving the ESG goals. So our vision is for a built environment whose explicit purpose is to enable people and nature to flourish together for generations. And it's only when we shift our focus from creating the built environment <clears throat> to the outcomes that are enabled by it that they can thrive together. And the built and the natural systems are complex and interconnected systems that are essential for our well-being. And improving outcomes for people and nature depends on the services that these systems provide and on coordinating the built environment as a whole, not just as individual parts. And there's an enabler section at the end of the vision that includes all the digital tools of the fourth industrial revolution and the need for delivery models like Project 13. So the construction playbook and our vision for the built environment have since been translated into policy in the UK and transforming infrastructure performance roadmap to 2030 or TIP as it is known. And this is the built environment model from TIP. And you can see that it illustrates our vision and has data and digital twins at the centre. And TIP is an industry change programme in partnership with government departments, industry and academia. So it's not just supposed to be a dusty document that sits on a shelf. And you'll see that it highlights in the centre at the heart of the change programme is the use of modern digital approaches and technologies alongside improved delivery models. And TIP, as well as the construction playbook, both reference Project 13. And very briefly, I just wanted to point out that it's not just in the UK. So in Infrastructure Australia has recently published their own version of TIP, including delivering outcomes, which also references our vision and Project 13. So back to the UK, this slide shows some of the key players that are working to achieve the TIP industry transformation programme. So the newly restructured Government Construction Board is leading the change programme across the government departments. The Construction Leadership Council on the right brings together the leading bodies from across the construction industry, and that's split into the four sectors, and you can see the horizontals and the vertical cross-cutting themes along the sides. And Project 13 is part of the Infrastructure Client Groups programme that you can see on the left. left. And this slide is also demonstrating how the themes of all the three key stakeholders are aligned, and therefore the fact that we have agreement on what the industry levers are to bring about transformation. So now I'm going to talk about how the infrastructure client group is rethinking industry processes and creating the enabling environment for digital transformation and Project 13. So the ICG brings together the leading economic infrastructure clients in the UK, which you can see here on this slide. And that includes transport, um, energy, water, nuclear and broadband. And it focuses only on the things that clients need to lead on. And it tries to find ways to consistently benchmark across the members and bring consistency to their supplier ecosystems. And it also acts as a homework sharing club. So it's not only to identify and share the best practice, but also to accelerate the adoption of it. And Project 13 involves and benefits from a wide range of stakeholders and organisations who are all making a contribution as it develops. But it is the infrastructure owners that are the key sponsors, recognising that the changes promoted by Project 13 come from and are ultimately owned by the infrastructure owners. And in the UK, that is particularly the infrastructure client group. So this slide is showing how the ICG programme fits together. So you've got Project 13, Digital Transformation and Carbon, and they all support and enable each other. And what I mean by that is that you can't exploit the full benefit of digital transformation, for example, using modern methods of construction, if you deliver in a traditional manner. 
And organisations cannot achieve their net zero targets if they don't deliver differently or exploit digital transformation. And none of this is possible without the right people having the right tools, skills and capabilities to achieve the desired outcomes. So that underpins it all. And then the four of them need to improve productivity in construction. And because they're all focused on outcomes and the use of the infrastructure, they lead to the improvement in the overall performance of infrastructure rather than just the creation of outputs or new assets. So this gives you the background to Project 13. But why do we need it? So number one, there's a sustainability issue in the industry. So the graph on the left is from the Pharma report, which shows that in the past 10 years, the main contracting organisation margins have not been more than 1%. And that's due to the emphasis on cost-based competition that's generated dysfunctional approach. So there's a focus on turnover and cash rather than generating a return, which creates sustainability issues and reduces the opportunity for investment in innovation and future skills, and it locks us into this low productivity performance. Number two is improving that underlying productivity, and construction has been flat over a 20 year period, and it's completely out of step with other sectors. So digital transformation is part of the solution. And very briefly, I wanted to define what we mean by digital transformation. So it's about ensuring that the right people have the right information at the right time, to make better decisions leading to the better outcomes I've talked about. It's about improving processes. It's not just about taking current processes and digitizing them as they are. And finally, and in that order, it's about applying technology wisely with the purpose in mind. So what is Project 13? Well, it's an industry-led movement aiming to improve the way that infrastructure is delivered. Um, it advocates moving from transactional approaches to more integrated collaborative models, and it brings together the right capabilities and the right technologies into integrated enterprises, building that more sustainable and progressive future for construction. So this diagram demonstrates the difference between a traditional delivery model that just delivers scope with transactional and linear relationships defined by a contract and scope-based procurement. And then on the right is the Project 13 enterprise model that is focused on delivering better outcomes for people and nature and bringing together the right skills and technologies to deliver the outcomes with integrated delivery teams and longer term relationships. And it's possible to use digital twins and modern methods of construction using the model on the left. However, you're not going to be able to fully exploit them. Whereas the enterprise model, on the other hand, means that the benefits can be across the cycle of the project most importantly, the operation and maintenance part, which is the most important part of the asset. And you can also see that it's easier for data and information to flow through the enterprise model on the right. And the intention is that it's set up to do that from the start with an enterprise digital transformation strategy that sets out how the data and the information will be shared and owned across the enterprise. And most importantly, you can see that the enterprise includes an integrator role and this is not a person or one organisation, but it's the capabilities required to achieve that outcome. And so this means a whole new approach to procurement, where what you're procuring is capability rather than scope or packages of work. And this includes digital capability, and it would include the digital twin. And you're looking for partners with the digital maturity required to achieve the outcomes where possible, rather than getting the partners together and then working with them as they go through a digital transformation at the same time as trying to deliver the outcome itself. So this is an example of what I mean by procuring for capability. You can see on the right the capabilities that this water company in the UK procured for its integrator. And Project 13 is based on five pillars. So organisation, governance and integration in the centre, they're essential to securing the better outcomes, and digital transformation, the capable owner, are the enablers that over time set the pace of change. And Project 13 is a set of principles which are based on existing best practice from across the industry pulled together in one model. So this is not about some future theory or hypothesis, but it's actually based on real life examples. And it deliberately remains at principles level so that it can be widely applicable. And indeed, it has actually resonated across the world. Um, it's been picked up by the World Economic Forum as a leading best practice, and it's being used by clients in places like Australia and New Zealand. 
So this slide shows the barriers we're trying to overcome, and on the right, the solutions that the Project 13 model offers. I'm just going to pick out three. So Project 13 creates alignment between owners and customers and all parts of the enterprise through this focus on outcomes. So outcomes are the starting point for engagement. And then you've got the shift from construction as core to the solution to intelligent infrastructure and smart assets. And in turn, that requires effective integration of technology and engineering. And number three is the move away from reward for doing work in turnover or hours to reward for delivering outcomes for greater value. And all parts of the enterprise, including the owner, are jointly incentivized to deliver customer outcomes. So the third foundation of Project 13, after the pillars and the principles, is the maturity matrix, recognizing that becoming a high performing enterprise is a journey and it doesn't happen overnight. And digital transformation has been identified by the adopter community as the area with the biggest gap to fill between current and desired maturity. And this is because it's about changing people's behaviours and improving capability. And to ensure that Project 13 remains at the cutting edge of best practice, we have a continuous learning loop where those that are putting the principles into practice share their learning and it's turned into products through our development groups that can then be shared with the industry. And we have a representative from the Middle East on the strategy group that you can see in the top right hand corner. And in April 2021, we launched the Project 13 Network, which is an online community platform where practitioners who are interested in rethinking industry processes can share their learning and interact. And it currently has nearly 2,300 members from across the world. And finally, to finish, these are the current adopters who are putting the principles into practice, including one in Sydney. And they have their own private Chatham House community, as well as being part of the overall Project 13 network community. And they meet together regularly to share their learning and barriers to accelerating the overall learning. 